This is a sonographic examination of carotid arteries, and the first image demonstrates the origin of the right subclavian artery, uh, and uh, this is a dual image. We can see some plaque here on the uh, on the grayscale portion of, of this image, and uh, this is appears to be located in the innominate artery uh, just at the origin of the subclavian artery. If we look at the color portion of this dual image, we can see a narrowing uh, caused by this calcific plaque uh, just at the origin of the subclavian artery. This is another dual image, and the grayscale portion demonstrates uh, uh, clean-looking uh, proximal common carotid artery on the right. Color Doppler demonstrates complete filling of the flow lumen of the uh, common carotid artery at this location. This is another dual image, and we can see the distal common carotid artery. Uh, it's difficult to determine whether there is plaque in this location or whether this is just reverberation. However, the color Doppler portion demonstrates very nicely that there is a flow void. There is no flow in this area indicating the presence of uh, a plaque. This plaque does not shadow, indicating that it is free of uh, calcification. This is the origin of the right internal carotid artery. A significant plaque with shadowing can be seen here, a smaller plaque located in the near portion of the uh, proximal internal carotid artery on the right. Here we see the color Doppler image. We see filling of the lumen with color Doppler. There's one area that is absent of color, and this is because of the shadowing from the calcific plaque. Remember, the shadow in the color image will be parallel to the steering line, so the shadow is going to uh, cause color to be absent in portions that may not be shadowed on the grayscale image because of the shadow, because of the steering itself. This is the origin of the external carotid artery. The grayscale image shows calcific plaque. We can see that uh, on the uh, color image as well. There is a branch visualized. This is probably the superior thyroidal artery. This is a Doppler waveform of the uh, right subclavian artery. This does not represent true reverse flow. This is reverse flow due to turbulence, and this is an abnormal waveform demonstrating the uh, flow disturbance created by the plaque that was visualized at its origin. The common carotid artery in a proximal region has a normal appearing waveform and velocities. The distal common carotid artery on the right uh, also has a normal appearing uh, waveform with a nice spectral win uh, window and sharp upstroke. The velocities are, are normal. The right vertebral artery is flowing away from the transducer. That can be determined by the negative sign over on the pulse Doppler graph. This means that flow is away from the transducer and clearly this vessel is flowing downward in this direction. We cannot determine the flow direction from this image because the uh, uh, image was updated at a time when color information was not present uh, within the sample gate. The left external carotid artery has a uh, nice sharp upstroke, a deep dichrotic notch, which are both normal features. However, there really is no evidence of a, a spectral window, and there is. this indicates that there is some flow disturbance in the vessel at this location. The proximal internal carotid artery demonstrates a velocity that is greater than 125, the velocity that discriminates uh, 
50% stenosis. So this vessel has greater than 50% stenosis, but less than 70% stenosis. The mid portion of the right internal carotid artery also has a flow velocity of peak systole that exceeds 125, indicating that there is greater than 50% stenosis in this location. The distal internal carotid artery has normal flow velocity under 125 centimeters per second peak systolic and a normal end diastolic flow velocity of approximately 40 centimeters per second. Again, a normal flow velocity. This is a dual image of the left subclavian artery. And uh, we can see a branch coming off it. This is most likely the left vertebral artery. The vessel is filled, flow lumen is, is filled with color Doppler, which is what we expect. The color Doppler information disappears in this area right here, and that's because we are perpendicular to the steering of the color box. In fact, there is no steering on this color image. This is a dual image of the left common carotid artery in a proximal location. The vessel fills with color and no disease can be seen or no plaque can be demonstrated under the grayscale image. When we look more distally in the common carotid artery, we see some non-shadowing hypochoic plaque located in the far portion of the artery. This is demonstrated by an absence of color flow on the color portion of the image. The left internal carotid artery has significant calcific plaque at its origin and a small amount further downstream. This is evidenced by a nice acoustic shadow in the grayscale, which will be perpendicular to the direction of the transducer, so straight up and down. The shadow in color information will be parallel with the angle of steering, so the shadow is going to go in this direction, and that's why we see absent color flow information here, even though we can see the back wall in, with the grayscale. This is an image of the external carotid artery and significant calcific plaque can be seen in its origin. We can see a flow void uh, due to the acoustic shadow from this plaque. Doppler image of the external carotid artery. Uh, I correct myself, this is mislabeled. This is far too deep to be the left carotid artery. In fact, this is the left subclavian artery has a nice triphasic signal, one, two, three, normal velocities, and a nice spectral window indicating a normal flow pattern at this location in the vessel. This is the left common carotid artery in a proximal region. Just uh, disregard this label over here. Uh, it has a flow velocity that is normal a nice spectral window, and uh, this noise we see here at the baseline is likely to be uh, respiratory noise in this patient. The distal common carotid artery has normal flow velocities, normal shape to its waveform with a good spectral window. The plaque that we visualized earlier is not creating a significant flow disturbance in this location. The left vertebral artery is flowing away from the transducer, which is the normal anti-grade direction. Again, the negative sign over here tells us that. There's no color information in this uh, image. Uh, and this is a, nor a normal waveform shape, velocity, and sample window here, or spectral window for a left vertebral artery. The left internal carotid artery in a proximal area has a significant uh, elevation in flow. 
it is over the 125 centimeter per second limit for 50% stenosis, but underneath the 230 centimeter per second limit for 70% stenosis. This has a lot of uh, spectral broadening with very little spectral window visualized here. This is a repeat of the signal we just examined earlier. Again, maybe a hint of a spectral window, but again, spectral broadening, elevated peak systolic velocity, indicating greater than 50% stenosis. The middle portion of the internal carotid artery on the left demonstrates spectral broadening with perhaps just a hint of turbulence, no flow elevation, and the distal portion of the internal carotid artery demonstrates, again, increased flow velocity greater than 125, indicating a uh, stenosis of greater than 50%, but under 70%, and uh, it's difficult to discern any plaque that is causing this flow elevation. This is nice laminar flow with a good spectral window. The external carotid artery has a abnormal signal. It's very weak and difficult to discern. This is the only image so far on this study that has not employed automatic flow measurements. And uh, this is manually done. And uh, they're estimating peak systole to be about here on this, uh, this artery. There's certainly spectral broadening and turbulence. And this is likely due to the calcific plaque that is present at the origin of this vessel. This is a grayscale image of the uh, left internal carotid artery. Now we can see the plaque now that uh, was likely, here's the proximal and the plaque that caused the elevation in the proximal. And here in the mid to distal is likely the plaque that gave us the the distal flow elevation for this artery. This is a summary of the uh, flow velocity signals, and uh, this patient has 50% stenosis, but less than 70% stenosis in both internal carotid arteries. The disease is greater on the left side. This patient also has uh, significant disease in the right subclavian artery. Uh, but normal left subclavian artery, and there is calcific plaque present in both external carotid arteries.